Right, dude, we are live. What's up, guys? This is Dem Keys, and today, um, today I'm gonna be uh, attending the community meetup event. Just excuse me for a couple of minutes. I'm almost done eating. I woke up just shortly before uh, the time for the community meetup. Um, we are gonna jump right into it. I'm gonna finish eating, and then I'll do a bunch of talking i think we might have missed the first world or we might be uh, the group might be in the first world but i'll i'll jump right into that uh let me let me finish eating and then i'll get back to you guys just like 2 minutes maybe
All right, dude. <clears throat> I know, I know. I said it would be like two minutes, and it's probably been like I don't know, four minutes, five minutes. I think four, maybe five. Anyways, I'm done eating now. So, what's up, guys? I'm gonna do a proper intro now. What's up, guys? This is Dem Keys, and uh, today we are attending the community meetup event. This is an event organized by Squid, where we'll create. Give me a second. I just got done eating, so my my uh, whole pronunciation and all it's it's gonna be a little weird. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, this is an event where world creators show off worlds worlds that they've been working on. Uh, they might be old worlds, they might be new worlds, or they might be work in progress worlds that haven't been released yet. So, right now, we are checking out this world. You know, this, this avatar, though uh, it's not, it's not the exact same, but it's really reminding me of uh, Fusty Lugs VR. Uh, she does dancing streams. Um, I think she still does. Like these days, these days I don't frequent her streams uh, as much as I used to. Um, but like every now and then I'll drop by, and I, I think she is still doing uh, dancing streams. Go, go check her out. Uh, her streams are a good time. Nice, wholesome community, friendly community. Um, but yeah, this this avatar is reminding me of. Uh, I think these these are called like chibis. I'm not sure, like the smaller version. So, anyways, we are in some kind of classroom. This world is called uh, Jabberwock Island. For some reason, this word Jabberwock it seems kind of familiar to me. I don't know where this is from, so I'm gonna I'm gonna Google this real quick. Uh, this world has been made by Cuddle Suna. That is this person. Um, they're a cow that makes stuff. Nice. Oh shit, dude! They've got a bunch of worlds. Wait, I feel like we've been to this world before. Three hundred and thirty-three random sounds. I don't know. I feel like I feel like we've we've been here before, dude. You know what I was thinking today? Wait. World created by Suna Mu. Wait, is this Suna Mu? Hold up, hold up. I think I remember this person. I think I remember this person, dude. Yeah, they also had uh, a club world. They've, they've, I think so. I think so. They've also uh, done. Oh yeah, there you go, Club Suna. I remember this person. They didn't go by Cuddle Suna back then. Uh, they went by Suna Mu, and uh, they've showcased. They've showcased uh, a couple of cool worlds, including this one, Club Suna. This is an older world of theirs. Still pretty cool. Um, I think they had showcased a world with a bunch of like shader stuff going on as well. Uh, I can't remember exactly. I'm sort of blanking. Moo light system. This is a demonstration of my upcoming audio link club light system. Hell yeah, dude. Nice. Okay. So, um this world that we are currently in oh yeah so i was thinking i was thinking i think today i should say or yesterday uh, let's 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 say today uh i was i was thinking earlier today that dude i should get back into doing like vr chat world building stuff right there's a couple of different ways that i can go about it there's a couple of different approaches that I could take in terms of like what kinds of worlds I want to build um, I definitely want to try using a bunch of assets provided by Kenny 
uh, Kenny, uh, by the way, if you go to Kenny.nl, that's K-E-N-N-E-Y dot N-L, um, Kenny provides free and has provided for a couple of years lots and lots of free um, free assets uh, made by them licensed under creative commons so you can use those assets for whatever you want they can be um they can be 2d assets 3d assets they are not can be they are like on on the website you can get 2d assets 3d assets um i think ui stuff uh you can get texture packs you can get um what else what else audio definitely audio um they have I think they also have like specific uh, specific like asset packs for certain purposes. Um, I think they also sell some. I'm, I'm not sure on that. You'll have to check their website. Uh, they do, if, if you want to support them, they do have like a, a way to donate to them. So yeah, uh, I want to I try using their assets because like what I want to what I want to focus on is the world building side of things alone not having to deal with uh any of the 3d art stuff as fun as it is dealing with the 3d art stuff world building is a separate thing um working on 3d art is a separate thing so if and in in the past when i have done this when i have uh tried to you know mix the two because of the because of my tendency to like hyper focus on things i end up focusing more on like silly things uh like oh hey let's let's try and fix so and so detail in this 3d model which barely anyone is going to notice it right but like to me it makes a difference i had so many such situations with my very first world colors around you well technically my first world was a virtual file system but yeah with, with my uh, a world that I released a couple of years ago called Colors Around You, I ended up focusing on so many minor details. I'm kind of glad that I did it though, because like I did get to learn a lot from it. I also got a chance to like experiment and uh, see see what works, see what doesn't work. Um, but I, I I'm definitely gonna say I spent more time on working on that world than I should have mostly because there was <clears throat> mostly because there were there were a bunch of things in that world uh, that, that I worked on that that never actually got into the world N never actually got into the final build because I I let go of them later on give me a second But yeah, dude, um, I want to get back into world building stuff. Man, I have been messing around with Godot for the past, I don't know, two weeks now, maybe. I think it's been, I think it's been close to two weeks. A uh, week and a half, at the very least, week and a half. For the past week and a half, I've been messing around with Godot. And I've gotten to know, I've gotten to learn quite a bit about the engine. Um, something I really, I just cannot get over it is, like when I make this comparison, and it's not, like I'm, I'm not, I'm actually not making a comparison. Like let me just put that out there. It's, it's just that I can't help but notice the difference between the two. Like, okay, I'll open up Godot, and, okay, just yesterday, I, I got an example. I'm not, my mind is just, like, all over the place. I'm not wording properly. Hold on, let me, let me get my thoughts in, like, one proper direction. So, yesterday, um... After not having used Unity for like a week and a half, which it, it wasn't on purpose. I wasn't like doing that. I wasn't like avoiding Unity. It's just that 
I was busy learning Godot, so I didn't really have time to open up Unity. <clears throat> so I didn't open up Unity for like a week and a half. Um, so yesterday, after not having used Unity for like a week and a half, and, and more importantly, after having used Godot for a week and a half, just a second, I need to make sure that we are keeping up with the group. Are they still in this world? Okay, so yesterday, after having uh, used Godot for a week and a half, I opened up Unity. Um, and I tried to... I, I, In fact, I installed uh, Unity 2023.1 20, because I realized that I hadn't installed the 2023 version recently. I'd, I'd mainly been working with the 2022 versions. I just hadn't had the chance to install a new thing. Um, so I installed the, the new editor. Uh, the 2023.1 and then I created a project I started creating the project I'm not even kidding when I tell you that project took 30 minutes maybe a few a few more minutes than that as well it took 30 minutes to create um, meanwhile I open up Godot the launcher opens up in a couple of seconds. I select my project and the project, it, it opens up in like less than 15 seconds. Now, I'm not trying to make a comparison here, but I can't help but make a comparison when I see that kind of thing. One of the reasons, and I totally understand what's going on. I even made a tweet about this because it was, it was like blowing my mind, okay? I, it, not just creating a project, like I, I, okay, I created the project. It took like 30 minutes to create. And this is not something new. I've had to deal with this in the past as well. And initially I thought it might've been my, my hard drive because a lot of things that, that are hard drive related, I've been having a lot of issues with them uh, for a couple of years now. So like, it's not that surprising. I wonder if the issue is not that my hard drive was dying. I wonder if the issue, actually, no, it could, it could have been, uh, like, yeah, no, my, my hard drive did have issues because like there were a lot of other signs, but I wonder if, if I could have actually gotten a speed up if I had started using SSDs, which with the, the current laptop that I'm using, I'm not sure to what extent that would have been possible. Um, because like back when I did get this laptop, which was a, it, it's a good few years ago, uh, when I got this laptop. Uh, give me, give me a second. Okay. So it's been, it's been a good few years since I got this, uh, laptop. And, um, those were sort of the earlier days of of ssds um because like even since then ssds have sort of like the technology has changed you've had two or three different types of technologies coming out um and in fact i, I think newer i should say at this point that would be a more accurate term newer ssd technologies coming out so like I don't know even if I would have at the time invested in an SSD, which by the way they were expensive. Even like five years ago, they were expensive. Now they're a lot cheaper because now it's becoming the norm. But back then they were expensive because it was still relatively new technology. Actually, I'm saying five years. It. I think it was a couple of years before. Well, yeah, okay, five years. Yeah, five five years is fair to say. Hold on, dude. We've been here and I haven't... Oh, wow, okay. We've been here and I didn't look... I, I didn't, like, step outside. I was wondering, like, okay, Sunamu made this world. Did they... Were we, were we just in a classroom or... Was there more? It's not that it's not that you know. Just in, when I say just in a classroom, it's, it makes the world sound bad, right? But like, wait, what is going on with the resolution? 
Give me a second. I just need to test. Oh, damn, dude. Okay, so you guys are getting some choppy frame rate. Um, I guess it is what it is. So this is kind of inter. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice this massive camera. What is this? What is this called? Monocam surveillance. So this is just a second. So this is a classroom and this leads into a beach. That's kind of interesting. And then there's another camera here. <laughs> okay. So this is an interesting concept. Wait, hold up. Can we, is, is all of that explorable? Holy shit, dude. And they fit all of this. This world is like less than 100 MB. Well, close to 100 MB. But like still less than 100 MB. Man, that's crazy. That's amazing. I've been standing in that classroom talking and I was about to leave as well when I I I I was I was thinking to myself that no they can't that what if there's more than this like let's go and interact with that door and see Man this is crazy So are there any details I think I think there weren't too many details because like the world hasn't been released yet. Um, so the world is called Jabberwock Island and uh, it, the description mentions DR sample. I'm not sure what that's about, but oh, I wonder if this, if they're commissioning this world, like if they're making this world for someone. I don't know. I, I haven't seen the I wasn't with the group like when they were showcasing the world I'm exploring it by myself or maybe maybe it's not a commission for someone maybe it's their their own creation that they're putting out there I'm seeing some kind of sign there what does that say Jabberwock Airport I think yeah wait hold up there's an airport here and there's a beach there can we can we actually go inside? Yeah, we can. Holy shit, dude. What is Jabberwock? Let me google this, dude. Cuz I feel like I've I've seen these creatures before. Whatever these creatures are. Let me just uh jabber walkie jabber walkie it's a movie okay give me give me a second let me so this is a 1977 movie Uh, Jabberwocky Alice in Wonderland movie. I think this is closer, maybe. Is it? I don't. I'm not sure. Dude, this is kind of cool. Like, we're able to interact with a lot of things here. We're able to go into a lot of places. Oh, are we are we climbing up that that tower? Oh man, look at that. 
Oh shit, there's a is, is that like a restaurant or something? Hold on, we'll have to walk all the way there. Hold up. Where's the rest of the group? Let's let's just Okay, so This is something about a button. Uh that crazy button. I think that's what this is supposed to say. Cause initially I read I read it as Thad uh, Thad Crazy <clears throat> Gimme a second. <clears throat> oh Thad Craze Thad Crass Z Craj C button. But I I think it might just I think it's meant to be uh that crazy button. Oh, is it Thad Crazy? <laughs> I don't know. Now I don't know what it is. Uh, hi, I'm that guy there. You can call me Thad. Thad? That guy there. Thad. That guy. Oh, okay. Thad. Okay. So it's not Thad. So that crazy button. Interest, drawing, programming, blender, slash unity, piano, anime. Hell yeah. And they've got they've got a they've got a couple of other worlds as well that you can check out. Wait, Mandelbox? Hold on. Oh man. Is this a ray marching world? Did they implement did they implement fractals, 3D fractals using ray marching? We need to go check this out. You know what? Okay, I'm gonna add this to uh, check later. This is a world from last year. Okay, cool. I, I think if that's the case, then I think I might have seen it already at some point. Oh, what is this? Recursive garden. Meet yourself in Thad rec Recursive Garden. Interesting concepts, dude. Magic mirrors. Recursive room. A room in a room in a room. And it comes with toys. Okay, dude. We have we have a couple of worlds that we can check out from this person. Uh, so everyone has moved to this world. Uh, we are going to move as well. But I'm kind of curious. So I want to... Actually, I don't, I don't know if I should walk all the way down uh maybe i should respawn and now walk to the restaurant or whatever whatever that is i'm not sure Usami Koral. Okay. Oh, this is this is cool. I like how there's cameras like everywhere. Yeah, I, I wonder if this is a concept from some kind of universe or if like I, I don't know this could be their own concept but like looking looking up the word jabberwock one one um universe that i'm i'm getting this from is or one universe where I, i'm seeing jabberwock being mentioned is alice in wonderland um so I don't know if this took inspiration from that or if this is like its own thing or I mean this this could very well just be the, the creator's own um their own sort of what do you what do you call it? Their own their own version of this. Like they use that concept and, and try to build something around it, which it's that's really cool. 
I mean, regardless whether this is a recreation of something else or if this is the creator's own concept, it's still, this is cool, this is crazy. But hell yeah, dude. Let's, um, Hotel Mirai, where have I heard this name? Okay, there's an ad playing, so I'm going to sit quiet for 30 seconds. I actually have to do a couple of other things. Alright, welcome back. So, uh, we are gonna jump to- oh my god, my ping is horrible today. Damn, dude, wait, what all, what all am I doing? Should, there's, there's probably some way for me to take the load down a little bit. Give me, give me a second. <laughs> oh, okay. Alright, so I did something that seems to have helped a little bit, kind of. Um, actually, no, it doesn't seem to have helped. But okay, you know what? It's fine. Um, we're gonna carry on. Uh, things are running okay, kind of. I mean, t wait, this world. How is there a public instance of this world yet? I'm not able to make a public instance. Or is it the? Is it that the creator is able to? Okay, that's gone. Alright, cool. So we're gonna make our own uh, instance and jump in there. Maybe I should put on my uh, my earphones. Just, just in case there's like sound or something. For a second, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the music. You know, I probably shouldn't be doing that because like moving into the browser, it causes lag for me. So I think what I'm gonna do is just mute the music from now on, and we're gonna jump into the world. Oh, wow, dude. Yo, this is kind of crazy. I don't know how well this is coming. Oh, yeah, this is coming across well on stream. This is... Yo, this is cool, dude. This is really cool. I like these kinds of effects. I've I've tried to make these kinds of effects as well in the past using mainly mainly doing stuff within shaders oh wow the the frame rate just tanked on stream is it mainly when i look up give me give me a second i'm just trying to figure that out uh yeah i think i think it might be when i'm looking up but yeah this kind of stuff that you're seeing I've I've tried to make this kind of stuff uh using uh using a lot of shader magic. Uh, this kind of stuff it's it's uh quite common to do it using shaders cuz like you can you can use textures 
to create masks of various sorts that you can then use to show or hide different parts of the mesh. There's there's a lot of different effects that you... Man, I should get back into doing shader and VFX stuff. That was a lot of fun. Like, I've just been busy with so many other different things that I don't I don't get the chance to do a whole bunch of shader stuff. Oh, give me a second. Uh, I should have probably hydrated during that little 30-second ad break, but yeah, give me 30 seconds. Okay, so I had turned off the music just in case there was any ambient sounds here. Um, wait, did this change? I feel like I feel like this changed a little bit because like it's sticking out a lot better now. I don't know if it's just me. I think it's I think it's sticking out a lot better. Like the the UI, it's standing out a lot better. Anyways. Okay. There is music. Uh there there was a screen here somewhere. Is it here? Oh, okay. Cool. Uh so I'm going to pause this. Cuz I wanted to This is an interesting instrument by the way. A dude that I went to school with, I think I think this is called, this is some kind of pan. Some kind of pan. Uh, hold on. Uh, let, me, let me just Google the exact name of the instrument. Um, I think it's called hand pan drum or hand pan just just hand pan I think uh hand pan yeah it's called it's it's called a it's called a hand pan I don't know if that's the actual name for it or if it's just like a name that was given on the western side of the world and the side of the world that actually made this, they had a different name for it. Um, handpan is a term for a group of musical instruments that were classified as a subset of steel pan. Okay, well, okay, you guys get the point. So this instrument, a dude that I went to school with, years later, I, I found out that this dude got into making these things like he professionally makes these uh hand pans and it was kind of interesting to see because this dude the sound that these things make it is wow it is just it is awesome you guys should look it up i i don't want to play it here because i don't know if somehow that could be considered like copyright and i don't want to deal with any of that because like uh, after I'm done with the stream, I usually well, after I end the stream, I usually download the VOD and upload it to YouTube. Speaking of which, I should probably work on like an integration where uh, actually I don't need to work on. It. I should probably work on setting up the integration because Twitch provides you with that that option to automatically upload it to uh, whatever YouTube channel you want. But I don't usually do that. I go through a slightly more manual process where I download the VOD and then I upload it and enter the metadata myself. Okay. It only works on SDK3 avatars. Okay, what, what was supposed to happen? Well, okay, so my avatar is not an SDK3 avatar. So what I'm going to do is choose, I think this might be SDK3. I, I think they might have, because this is one of the VR chat provided avatars. 
Okay. Why are we T posing? Okay, so I'm I'm glad that they gave us the option to turn off the mirror because definitely helps performance a little bit. Um, oh, also I should probably uh, unmute the music. Speaking of music, shout out to Machine Supremacy. Uh, go check them out on YouTube, uh, especially if you like like um, video game inspired music. Uh, you you like the stuff that they that they make. So yeah, go go check them out. Now I'm gonna switch. Oh no, I don't remember what this is. Let's let's not go into that. Let's not go into that. Okay. So for some reason this is T posed. Um, what if I go into Robot Kyle? Okay, Robot Kyle is also... Did I break something when I tried to press the button with a non-SDK3 uh, avatar? Let's uh, rejoin this world. What is that? Oh my god. Okay. So I'm gonna rejoin this world. Also, it seems like the group has moved on, so we're gonna we're gonna hurry it up with this. Okay, so we are now in this world. We have respawned. Uh, I'm going to switch to this avatar. All right, cool. This is an avatar that I use. This is, by the way, a public, a public VR chat avatar. Um, it's one of many free avatars that are provided by VR chat. Uh, how, how do you get access to how do you get access to the public uh, avatars this I think public so you have uh, you have a bunch of avatars here <coughs> uh, you know what we can try picking another one uh, just for the sake of it being an AV3 avatar. I'm pretty sure the rat is, is gonna be AV3. You know what, we can go for this one. Oh wait, we can go for clown. Oh, let's maybe not go for clown. Um, all right. So, wait, if I select this avatar, is the avatar going to be hovering? on the ground or hovering off the ground or man okay I'm taking so much time to select a, an avatar for testing something let me just pick something random dude holy shit uh, let's just uh, go for wait what is this avatar yeah okay cool so we're gonna select this
Okay. That's the avatar. Looks nice. Okay. Um, only works on SDK3 avatars. Okay, so let's click on this. And what just... Oh. Okay. <laughs> what is going on? Okay, let's let's click on it again. So it's controlling it's controlling the the avatar's armature in some way. Or at least that's what it seems like. I don't know if it's doing what what it's intended to do. <laughs> All right, dude. Okay, so this world is called. Um, I don't know if the world has been released yet because I don't see a public instance option. I, I also don't see public instances. Uh, maybe it's going to be released at some point in the future. Um, but yeah, the world is called uh, That Crazy Button. And uh, it's made by Thad. <laughs> that. That. I don't even know how to say it. Gaither? Uh, oh, oh, that guy there. There you go. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That guy there. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right, dude. Cool. So, uh, we are going to move on to the next world, which is The Hunt. This is a world by... Oh, man. This is a world by Alt Centauri. They make amazing worlds. You guys need to go check out all of their worlds. Like, in the past, they've made they've made whole game worlds. Um, back when Udon had, had uh, released, nearly, they actually made, like, a proper game world with... with quests and stuff like that it was and they made they made a couple more as well not just that one they made a they made a bunch more uh pretty amazing stuff pretty amazing stuff i definitely recommend going and checking out all of their worlds uh the world that i'm talking about which was like you know with quests and all that i don't know if the world is still up eden that's what yeah uh, so uh, eden was a very good world um wait was it eden I think so. I think so. And then uh, Escort is another very nice one. It's where you, um, you're you sort of escorting a convoy of some sort. Um, you and a bunch of other people, you have to protect this, this, this payload as it's getting from one point to another and then to another. I don't remember how many checkpoints are there, but you guys have weapons. And at each checkpoint, I believe, you... So throughout, uh, throughout, like from one checkpoint to another, there's going to be bad guys, there's going to be enemies attacking. So you and the other people around you, so basically a bunch of the other players, you all have to shoot the enemies and you rack up points in that way. And I think you use those points to pay for upgrades. So in the next, at the next checkpoint, you can, you can then purchase various types of upgrades. Um, not just weapons upgrades. There's, I think, stats upgrades for your, for yourself. I don't remember exactly what all there was. Maybe there's like stuff for uh, for defense. There's stuff for offense. There's there's like a bunch of there's a bunch of uh, different types of upgrades you can purchase. Um, but it was fun. I don't remember how far they took it because like back then we had gotten a chance to see it. Um, in its early stage, because uh, they had showcased it at Lakusa's uh, World Hub event, so we got a chance to check it out there, um, and it was a lot of fun to play, dude. Uh, it was a lot of fun to play. Hold on, let me just mute the game. And Eden is also a very nice world. Uh, Noir is another very nice world. I don't think I ever got a chance to play Nocturne Loft. There was one world which at the time they hadn't uh, worked on the desktop support for it. It was mainly VR supported. I don't remember exactly which world it was. Maybe it was Noir. Maybe it was Nocturnal Loft. I think it was Noir, maybe. 
because like I didn't get a chance to play it um, but I told other friends of mine and I got a chance to watch them playing it on their stream um, and then this was another nice one as well relaxation haven this was I believe this was more of an experience than a game I don't remember exactly but yeah that my point is uh, Art Centauri makes just amazing worlds uh, so go check out a bunch of uh, their other worlds after I've checked out this world. The Hunt. Okay. So we're going to create a new instance. Uh, it seems like the world hasn't been released just yet. Um, we are probably getting to see a pre-release version. Which is kind of cool. There's probably going to be uh, ambient sound, so I'm going to unmute the game. I'm going to mute the music. And uh, we are going to jump into the world. So let me unmute the game, mute the music, and we are good to go. Oh, let me also hydrate. Give me a second. Okay, uh, photosensitivity warning. Uh, this game, this is a game, hell yeah. This game contains lights that make it unsuitable for people with photosensitive epilepsy or photosensitive conditions. All right, so disclaimer, if you are photosensitive, uh, if you have any photosensitivity issues, then uh, probably look away. I guess I'll announce it once the photosensitivity part is gone. Oh, there's another notice. Okay. I was wondering why nothing happened. Okay. Um, audio notice. Please set the world volume to edit. I like that they took the time to do this. Okay. Uh, please set the world volume to at least... 70% all music and audio effects within the game are safe to be used while streaming I'm wondering if I'm wondering if I should take their word for it Okay, you know what? Let's take a chance. Let's let's take a chance for the sake of the experience. So they said at least 70% Uh, I think 60 is fine. I think 60 is fine because already it's a, it's a, like I can hear it and at the same time I don't want it to drown out my audio. Wait, is this their spookality entry? Holy shit. Okay, this is a horror adventure game. If you have a fear of the ocean or of endlessly dark spaces in general, consider this your warning all right cool cool um yeah okay i like that they took the time to give all of these these disclaimers all of these notices um because that it definitely helped like because for example if i would have gone into the into the world with world sounds muted i would have missed out on certain parts of the experience Okay, what's under settings? Snap turning, beyond VR post-processing. I think I've heard this name before, beyond VR. Did they release some kind of post-processing uh, 
package or something? Uh, give me a second. Let me just Google. Or not Google. Let me look them up on Twitter. Beyond VR. Uh... Okay, there's a Beyond VR C. All right. Uh, okay, okay. You know what? We're gonna we just we're just gonna jump into jump into this. I like that there's uh, sound effects even for like the menu. These small things that I'm really appreciating. I think the reason I'm appreciating it so much is because like you don't you don't see it like as commonly or at least I haven't seen it as commonly maybe it's because I haven't been exploring worlds a whole lot recently where at least you know back in the day people didn't give too much attention to these kinds of things and it helps when you when you give attention to like the minor details because those minor details can really they can really uh enhance the experience alright so I just clicked begin game and nothing happened okay. oh wow dude intro sequence here okay dude we we started in like a an FPS thing okay let's go I'm just gonna relax back a little, hold on. Okay. Alright, so there's somebody here. Uh, is there something that I can interact with? There's a gun. Okay. Oh, shit. Let's go, dude. They've got the, the grappling system. Wait, I wonder if uh, if they made their own for this purpose, or if uh, this is using a similar system to what... Actually, didn't we a while back see um, a world being showcased by All Centauri, which was uh, showcasing like different kinds of mechanics, and one of them was like this grappling hook thing? Anyways, I was about to ask if it's using a similar system to what uh, what we had in, like, Hook Junkers. Okay, so. Uh, right click is probably not a good idea, right? Because it'll let go of the gun. And... I think I lost the gun. Okay, so let's not do that. Uh, how do I how does it, how do the mechanics of this work all right I'm stuck here so perfect nice how do the mechanics of this work like do I am I supposed to hit space All right, let's carry on. Let's let's just let's explore. So they mentioned this is supposed to be a horror map. Are we able to walk into places? Dude, where did the gun go? Oh no, did the gun fall? Oh, I'm floating. I was expecting to fall. That's interesting, dude. Hell yeah, let's go. Okay, so we don't need the grappling thing then. Let's just... Let's just, uh, let's just fly.
By the way, you're going to be seeing, you guys are going to be seeing a bunch of uh, really cool worlds and avatars and stuff uh, soon because uh, VR chat is going to be opening up their entries for spookality. So you're going to be see you're going to be seeing a bunch of uh, a bunch of really cool worlds and avatars being being posted publicly. Uh, so yeah, enjoy. I'm definitely going to be uh, checking out a bunch of the worlds this year cuz like last year I just didn't get a chance. I had so many other things going on that I kind of just I I I think if I remember right, last year I didn't get a chance to look at it. I think the year before that, maybe I did. The year before that was 2021. And I think so. Because like I've, in, in like the past year or two, I've sort of uh, fallen out of the habit of doing a couple of things that I was doing, you know, more frequently before. Uh, things change, you know, so because of that, I just couldn't keep up with all the other stuff that I was doing. In a way, it was good because it, it, it definitely led to a lot of good things. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a bunch of different things now. I'm, for example, not just streaming VR chat now. In fact, I only stream VR chat like once a week if I get the chance to attend the community meetup event. Uh, otherwise, I'm usually building my VTubing setup or learning something or whatever. Speaking of building my VTubing setup, today, after after VR chat, we are going to be carrying on working on the VTubing setup. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited to get back into working on this setup. I definitely want to get the the... UDP server up and running so that we can establish uh, uh, inter-process communication. Once I have that done, dude, it's gonna... Man, it is. Once I have that done, it is... It's gonna really take take things to the next to the next level because once we are able to establish communication between the main VTubing app and any other app, further from that point, I can I can start working on the remote control applications. Which, by the way, I am considering working on the remote control app. I, I think I mentioned this before. I'm I'm considering working on the remote control applications in in Godot instead of uh, instead of Unity. One of the main reasons being the iteration time. Um, it just takes longer to do things in Unity versus at least like on, on a low end system. Um, just loading up the editor can take, you know, a couple of minutes. Um, and opening up a project takes a couple of minutes. After I uh, after I finish writing a script, and then tab back into the Unity editor, then I have to wait for, again, you know, like thirty seconds maybe for the script to reload. Like a, a bunch of these things take time, and I understand that the engine is. I I, I even tweeted about this uh, earlier. I like. I understand that the engine's design has changed a lot over the years. And they've added a bunch of features and things are a lot more modular now. And uh, there's a bunch of systems running in the background. I understand all of that stuff, but holy shit, dude. It has, it has bloated the engine so much that running it on low-end devices, it's, it's a bit of a chore. On the other hand, you look at Godot, iteration time is so quick. In fact, I can even make changes to scripts. To a certain extent, I can even make changes to scripts while there while a scene is running. So I, I feel like I'm gonna benefit a lot more from working on the remote control applications in in Godot, or at least the remote control application that I planned to work on. That one application, at the very least, I can work on. I can work on it in Godot. Um, 
or I'll see because like w- one of the other hold on we are still in this world wait this thing is that's interesting why is it capturing right mouse move but nothing is happening on left what's going on there okay um all right so everyone has jumped to a different world so why is there this animation going on now so i'm still not sure what exactly we're supposed to be doing in this world um but everyone has jumped to another world by steve the mitochondria is this world public this world is not public so um we are going to respawn intro sequence here return to skiff skiff what is skiff I was never with Skiff in the first place. All right. I'm not sure if we were being shown a demo of of like what the world is going to look like or if because like it does seem like this is still uh still like an early version it's still like work in progress that lever moves a ship forward and back oh man okay so this is a tutorial why did i spawn in that other place then because like okay i'm gonna respawn and then i'm gonna return to game right so i come over here how am i meant am i meant to interact with these people what just happened? I press F and I respawn. What is going on? Oh. Okay. Oh, okay, so earlier when I thought that the guns had fallen through the ground or they got lost or something, no, they, they were in my, what I'm assuming is my inventory. That's, dude, that's convenient. That is definitely convenient. It would be better if um, there's a better way of us finding out that the gun is in the inventory. Um, that being said, this is like an early version, so... I'm sure they're, they're going to work on something to, you know, make it a little more evident. But, like, I'm still confused as to how we were supposed to start that tutorial. Because, uh... Oh, also, it, it didn't really tell me that E does this, F does that. I still don't know what F did exactly. But it didn't tell me that E does anything. I hit E just to see if something happens. And fortunately, something happened. So I'm still not sure like how we are supposed to start up the tutorial. Uh, is this the ship that we are supposed to be traveling through? No, it's not. Where is the ship that we are supposed to be traveling through? Because, like, I, I don't know what skiff is. Okay, so I, I, I think maybe this is meant to be like a... A preview like an early a very early version that they're they're trying to uh, showcase and uh, this is what they've got so far so I'm excited I definitely want to check out uh, the world once once it's uh, ready okay so I'm seeing green stuff there so we're gonna try and travel I like that there's these there's this debris in in space so it makes it a little easier to grapple onto things and get there right so i still don't know what's going on with skiff that being said, we are going to jump to the next world. Um, 
be on the lookout for Alt Centauri's world. Uh, what is this world called? The world hasn't been released yet. Uh, they're still working on it. Uh, the world is called The Hunt. Echoes from the Ether or Aether. Um, Spookality 2023. Cool. So the I think the the um, the admissions open up the like the Spookality entries. The what do you what do you call it? Like what's the term for that? The admissions. Let's say the admissions. They they open up. I think in a couple of days. I think so. It was something something in in the twenties. Okay, so we are gonna jump to Steve the Mitochondria's world uh, called Project Postmortem Afterlife something. Now, while this loads, give me a second while I uh, while I hydrate. So at this point, I think I can turn the world sounds down. And I probably should turn the world sounds down as well, unless they give an option to mute the music, if there is any music. music oh wait shit i think we've been here all right so music is down great so we i believe we have been here the last time that we were here i should change my avatar back okay the last time that we were here oh this was the world that was uh showcasing uh udonity wasn't it i think so I'm not sure. I remember some of the options were not working for me the last time. Okay, what is Afterlife? Let's read this. Project Postmortem. Give me a second. I need to change my seating position. Man, the ambient sounds really add to the experience. Uh, let's turn the world sounds down to like 50. Also, let's carry on playing the music. Which doesn't seem to be playing, so it's probably paused. Alright. Great. Alright, um... Project Postmortem is a passion project to bring the afterlife bar from the cyberpunk universe into VRChat as an interactive experience. We want to provide the fans with Cyberpunk 20, 2077. Uh, cyber, wait, we want to provide fans of the Cyberpunk 2077 game and Edge Runners anime a new kind of social VR experience with unique characters and stories. How did Project Mayhem... No, how did Project... Uh, what did I think of Project Mayhem? Oh, it's because I was watching Fight Club. I think I think that's where Project Mayhem was the thing. Okay. How did Project Postmortem get started? After the release of Cyberpunk Edge Runners anime, uh, Steve, became <laughs> Steve became obsessed with the Cyberpunk universe and started modeling the afterlife from scratch with the intention of turning it into a, turning it into a VR chat world. While Steve's primary focus was environment itself, Varnian eventually came around eventually came on board as a programmer and UI UX designer to implement the V Udon prefab ecosystem into the world as a fundamental element. Yeah, okay, so this is why I remember. And this was also when I made the mistake 
where I, because like when I saw, I think they're talking about uh, Udanity, the 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 V Udan thing that they're mentioning. I think they're talking about Vanyan's uh, prefab Udanity, and the first time that I had seen it was, I believe, in this world. It did not mention Vanyan. At least, if it did mention somewhere, then I missed it completely, and so I accidentally gave Steve all of the credit for this asset. And then later on, when I looked it up, I realized, oh fuck, I gave credit to the wrong person. And it's a, it's a live stream, right? You can't really go back. You can't really correct that. So then I had to correct it the next time. I think I corrected it the next week, like at the next community meetup that I streamed. I corrected myself then. Not that anyone would really give a shit, but like if anyone was watching it, then to me it means something that I corrected the wrong information that I gave out. Um, but yeah, uh, dude, Udanity, that is, that is a that is a really cool concept. That is. So that is Vanyan's attempt to create the Unity editor in Udon. As in the Unity editor running on top of Udon. And it is crazy. There is a bunch of work that goes into this kind of thing because they have to deal with stuff like uh, the UI and various components, how various components work, how various types of uh, game objects that do different things, how they work. Um, I don't know if there's like scripting ability yet. I don't know if there will ever be scripting ability, but you have a Unity editor and you are able to create and move objects around and they you can see the effect of that like within your environment. You are able to control your environment uh, through that Udonity uh, editor. Okay. Uh, during the first year of development, Project Postmortem has brought several community. Also, a real quick shout out to Vanian, dude. Vanian and a bunch of other people. These are the kinds of people who are just like working on on various types of like long term projects as as like passion projects. Um, if you go follow Vanian on Twitter, you will see them posting updates every now and then of various experiments that they are doing with their vehicle system. I forgot what the system is called, but they made a vehicle system for various types of vehicles. Um, and it is it is crazy. It is incredible. Like they've they've taken uh, they've taken so many things into account. They've 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 taken care of so many minor and major details that would make the the driving experience more immersive stuff like um okay you get into a car uh how does it adjust based on how tall your avatar is or how short your avatar is uh or let's say desktop versus vr they've taken care of that as well they've also added support for full body full body tracking there there are various features that you can uh, do with full body tracking only and also with VR only but like with desktop it would be a little tedious to do it that way uh, stuff like for example I, I think shifting gears is a good example there's there's a lot dude there's so many so many things that system that they're working on and it's not just for like one type of vehicle there's multiple types of vehicles there's uh, from what I remember sedans sports cars um, pickup trucks like the Ford F-150 Raptor I don't remember if, if SUVs are a part of it and uh, recently they they were working on like truck physics as well like big big vehicle physics it's crazy dude it's it's amazing it's it's amazing seeing all of these passion projects of these people um, okay during the first year of development, Project Postmortem has brought several community members together to bring Night City to VR chat and make the world feel more alive. What will be Project Mayhem? Project Post. <laughs> I keep calling it Project Mayhem. What will be Project Postmortem's future? Uh, Project Postmortem 
will be extended in the future with more breathtaking environments, uh, thrilling action sequences, immersive physical interactions, and captivating stories and characters bringing you on an unforgettable journey. That is crazy, dude. Okay, cool. Um, let's... So, what's under updates? This is the first public release featuring the parking lot. Public release? Uh, give me a second. Oh, maybe the world is not public just yet. Maybe it's like super close to becoming public. I think. I'm not sure. Wait, it says published on the 24th. Why am I not able to create a public instance of this? What's up with that? Um... Okay, I'm not I'm not sure what's going on. But yeah, uh, hopefully this... Man, what is going on? Okay, hopefully this is going to be releasing... Hopefully this is going to be releasing soon. Um, we... I, I also see Dinky Studios, dude. Uh, Danger Nodal Animations. So Dinky, Dinky has also made uh, a bunch of very cool worlds. Back in the day, they made this really cool. Um, I, I don't remember what what you call these kinds of games, but kind of like a Left 4 Dead style thing, where you and a couple of other people, you have to escape zombies. You have to fight zombies, and uh, you can like purchase weapons and stuff. And actually, I don't I don't remember if you could purchase weapons in Left 4 Dead. But yeah, in this one, you you could. Um, you could purchase weapons. You could... Uh, um, I don't remember if you could upgrade weapons or not. There was like a marketplace where you could do... Where you could do stuff. It was an interesting... It was a very interesting concept. And this was, again, like... Uh, earlier days of Udan. So this was a good, like, two or three years ago. More, maybe. I don't remember. Anyways, we should jump into the world. Oh, oh, what's going on? Okay. Dude, the ambient sounds. Hold up, you can talk to people? What is, what is use? F? Do I just... Oh, 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 easy. A job for me? You know it's rude to stare, right? You're not from around here, are you? Hi there. Sorry, I don't talk to visitors. Looking for a friend? Well, keep looking. Whatever you do, don't mention Blue Table around Steve or Varnian. Shouldn't you be looking for a mirror or something? Sorry, I don't want to talk to you. You a cop? With you staring at me like this, I expect you to buy me a drink. Whoa, we're like... Cyberpunking on the edge right now. Woo! Cyberpunking on the edge. Yo, cop. Okay, this is cool. So there's uh there's a few more newer places than what we had the last time. Oh shit, dude, there's a there's a bunch of more stuff. Are we not able to talk to this person? Okay, what about...
It's kind of cool that like even in like these small screens, we have interactive UI elements. Well, okay, maybe not that, but like the scrolling thing. And then here you can like select the music. I didn't even, I these are like small things that you you barely pay attention to, but then they've kept important things in like these these areas. Are we able to interact Some with chromed up gaunt busted through here and now I have to clean up the mess. Ah, cyber psychos, am I right? I just wanna finish up work and get lost in my favorite brain games. Ah, I really need some time off, but I'm just so short on it. I just wanna get through another day without running into a cyber psycho on the screen. All these terms, I'm not Some I'm chromed not, up gaunt busted through here and now I have to I'm not really familiar with these with these terms safe area okay this is a safe area entering new area okay up here we are not able to access okay oh i i also just realized that we have like footstep sounds that's kind of cool oh shit there's a bunch of people to talk to One of whom is holding a bat. Okay. Yeah, this thing you're doing, I'm not falling for. Yeah, this thing you're doing, I'm not falling for. I don't have time. You would get. I don't have anything for you. What do you want now? Go away, my time. Go away. Can you see I'm busy? Wow, there's a lot of. You would get. Okay. What was that sound? I jumped and I think I hit this. Is that? Is that coming from me? Hold up. Oh, that's cool. So there's like this thing where you collide with things. And like even that makes a certain sound. That's kind of cool. Like that's, that's a tiny bit of extra immersion there. Yeah, what is this? Oh, is it just that there's no collider here? Okay. Okay, hold up. We need to keep up with the rest of the group. So... I'm... I don't know if this world is going to be releasing soon, so like I don't want to say it's going to be releasing soon, but like it's, I guess they plan on releasing it to the public at some point. So just be on the lookout, especially if cyberpunk is your thing, be on the lookout. Uh, this world is called Project Postmortem Afterlife, and it is made by uh, Steve the Mitochondria, Varnian, and I think a bunch, a bunch of other people as well. Um, but yeah, we are gonna jump to the next world, which is called a creepy cave. Uh, this is a world by Arca Link. Oh shit! Okay, cool. There's, I think there's more content this time. Hold on. I think, I think they have more to, uh, more to showcase. They've probably uh, done more work on the world. I think we saw this world the last week at the last community meetup, and uh, at the time it was still work in progress. It's, it's probably still work in progress and uh, they have like some some work done on it because like 
I'd imagine I'd imagine they don't want to rush this kind of thing, especially since uh, you know there is some time until they have to uh, they have to give their entry. It also mentions quest tests, so I'm, I'm guessing there's like performance optimizations, maybe. Okay, there is an ad playing, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hydrate in the meantime. All right, welcome back. So, uh, the last time we were here, we had the, the tutorial thing. This is our uh, flashlight, and this is a battery that that uh, replenishes the flashlight's battery. And then there was a key that we can carry and use to open up a door. Let's go back and replenish the flashlight again. Okay, so now we are in a cave, which we're going to carry on navigating. I need to make sure. Oh, there's the battery. All right. Uh, so here I need to find the key. From what I remember, so we came from here. Um, I believe this side had something. It had, it had some kind of book. Oh, oh, okay. What is... Well, okay, the last time it showed the placeholder text. I'm guessing it's placeholder text uh, still. Oh, it could also be that they just don't want to give away the, you know, the experience. Or maybe they just, they just haven't added the text yet. It, it could just be that simple as well. Uh, where are we? Here. Okay. So we come here and we get the key. And then... Wait, is there anything more here? No. Okay. And then we go back and open up the gate. All right, cool. Uh, give me a second. I just need to check. Okay, all right. Okay, so there's a gate here. And from what I remember, there was... There was also something here that, yeah, you could fall. And that makes you respawn. Uh, there's a ladder here that you have to use to get to the other side. Okay. Maybe I should go back and get battery again. Better. All right, there's the key. Uh, there's probably... Let's explore a little bit. This is a little too dark, dude. Little too dark. Well, I mean, I guess that's the idea then, right? I mean, it, it's a cave. You're, you're supposed to barely be able to see anything. There was a book somewhere here, if I remember right. Oh, there's the book. I wonder if in like the final game also there's going to be like some uh, like I, I wonder if the book is 
just lore or if it's giving you something well i mean in a way the lore is also you know part of the experience it's part of the the immersion i guess it provides you with like oh my battery is dying cool all right let's go oh yeah so okay this is where we had stopped the last time because there was nothing more than this gate this time there's more more to it oh there's another key here uh okay Um I wonder if that's the dead end now, like if if that's the end of the the demo here. Because it did mention quest something, right? Give me, give me a second. Okay. It did mention quest test. Uh, let's explore though. Let's see if there's like more uh, keys. Oh, oh shit. My light is dying. My light is like super dying. Okay. I wonder if we can like interact with this in some other way. Oh, wait. Oh, shit. I didn't notice this. Okay, my bad. So there is, there is more to it. Did I just fall? Oh, what is this? Okay, so I think I fell from there. Okay, uh, so what are we looking at here? All right, so we have a ladder. Oh, does the ladder help me get back up? Or do I have to use the ladder to climb on something? Let's let's pick up the ladder. Maybe the ladder will show where I'm supposed to place it. Oh, there it is. All right. The ladder gave the hint. I forgot about that. All right, so let's climb up. There is another ladder here, which I'm assuming is to climb back uh, out of that hole or climb back into that hole so I can go and open up the gate. All right, perfect. Wait, where am I? Okay. So we climb up here. There it is. Okay. Alright. Cool. So. 
where is the gate? There it is. Awesome. Hell yeah. Okay, I've fallen down another hole, I think. First things first. Wow, okay, there's more. There's a lot more this time. Okay, so there's a ladder here. Man, this limited vision thing, it takes some getting used to. Right, so what is... Oh, wait, wait, I'm seeing something here. There's... Okay, so I fell down from something. Right? So that's a gate that I'm supposed to go through. Okay. Let's pick this up. See where... Okay. Hold on. Are there two places where I can place the ladder? That's one place. And this is another place. Okay, so all do all the places just highlight when you pick up a ladder? Is that is that what what happens? Or could it could it be that uh, this specific ladder and another one that's somewhere in this location, somewhere in this in the vicinity, could it be that these two ladders it wouldn't matter in what order you put them? Because like there's another ladder that I have to put, but I need to find the other ladder. Um, okay, okay. Oh, can I remove a ladder after I place it? Is that a thing? No, I don't I don't think so. So the next ladder has to come here to like bridge this gap. But I don't think I'm able to like do like a long jump kind of thing. Uh could it be hidden somewhere here? I think my my battery's dying. Hold on. Let's go back. What is... No, it's not here. Is this track a little loud? I think this track is a little loud. Oh wow, that is why is that coming in so loud? Uh give me a second. I didn't take into account that there was some some kind of music going on in the world itself. Okay, anyways. Man, I hope this this simple sound doesn't cause any kind of like copyright issue. Because I would, I would hate to have to... Well, okay, fortunately, Twitch handles that. Twitch, if, if there is, like, copyrighted music, it'll mute the thing. It'll mute that segment. Um, and I found out that you can actually appeal to, to have the thing unmuted. 
because like that had happened when I uh, when I was playing uh, some of Machine Supremacy's older music because uh, not all of the music is stream safe which is probably why they made a playlist uh, in which they put a bunch of the tracks that are actually stream safe and there's a lot of them there's there's a good like hold on there's a good like 93 tracks in here so that's a lot of music right um but like not all of their music the, all, all of the tracks in this playlist are safe um at least so far they have been on my end like i haven't had any issues but like certain tracks that are not in this playlist uh they do they do trigger the content id system they do get picked up by the content id system and then twitch is going to mute that small segment of your stream and so i found out that you can actually appeal the the muting thing there is a process to go through like you have to fill out a form there's a whole like it's a whole like legal thing right and it's not really worth it for a vod that i don't really i i don't really care all that much about if that makes sense it's a vod that's going to get deleted in like 15 days and other than that it's going up on my on my uh vod archive channel right so like it's not that big of a deal twitch muted it they did me a favor so i can i can post the thing on youtube as well Hold up, there's a book here. Alright, so there's more placeholder text. Where is the next ladder? Am I missing something here or is something incomplete here? Now, I don't want to spend all my time here. I, I do want to keep up with the rest of the... VRC designer? What is this? This is something made by Vaughan. Let's go. Uh, so, all right, we're gonna we're gonna move on from this world. This world is uh, the world hasn't been released yet. It's it's being made for Spookality, I believe. Um, but this world is called a creepy cave, and it is made by Aka Link. Um, be on the lookout for this world. All right. So we are going to move on to something called VRC Designer. That sounds interesting. And this is made by Vaughan. Uh, I don't know if Vaughan still does tutorials, like uh, world building tutorials. But like uh, a while back they did do uh, world building tutorials. I think avatar tutorials as well, maybe. I, I don't know. But they definitely did like world building related stuff. And they also made they also made a, a bunch of uh, plugins and stuff. Plugins are not not necessarily well. I mean, I think they did make some plugins as well. But like, uh, they they made uh, assets that you can that you can use stuff like uh, stuff like their uh, their clocks. Uh, there there are a couple of other. I'm just blanking on on. All of the stuff right now, but they made they made a they made a bunch of things. All right, so what are we looking at here? Okay, we equip this. Uh, open menu, middle mouse. I like that it knows that. Oh man, this is cool. Okay, so can we just like start placing objects? Okay, how do I select a different object? Oh, is this how? Yeah, okay. So this would probably if I was in VR then I could very easily say okay, yeah, yeah, that's 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 fine. Oh, what else what else do we have here? Spawn, transform. Oh, transform as in the transform of the cur currently selected item, I think. Uh color. Oh yeah, okay. So that that's all for the uh currently selected item. Then delete. Are you sure you want to delete? Save data. Okay. Uh, current save. Oh, okay. So this is... Uh, it's all serialized into JSON. Hell yeah, dude. 
let's go this is cool okay so this is like a it's like a proof of concept kind of thing right so far but it's still it's still pretty cool seeing this kind of thing being made Uh, are these interact oh wait you can holy shit okay yeah see this is where it gets kind of interesting right wait what's going on is there is there a limit as to how many i can place i think there might be a limit is there a limit Oh, used. Okay, yeah. Okay, so there is a limit. Okay, so here's what we can do. Okay, we climb up. How do I select? I think that's how. Okay. And then, oh, oh, take it easy. And then delete. In fact, maybe I should also delete this one because I didn't place this properly. Okay, perfect. Then we switch over to spawn. And wait, what happens if I scale this? Oh shit, I didn't mean to do that. Um, let's go delete. Okay, uh, how, do I, how do I select this again? Okay, didn't mean to do that. And, okay. All right. So let's say I've selected this. Uh, and let's say I go and stand on top and then I scale it on the Y axis. Okay, that's cool. So the thing is not scaling up. I think because may maybe because I'm standing on it. Uh, what if? Oh wait, no, it was it was scaling. I was going up. I didn't I didn't realize that. Okay, let's try scaling more. Yeah, I think it is scaling up. Yep. Oh man. Okay, so there's there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do with this. Also, it mentioned syncing. So does that mean that a bunch of people can come together and build things together? Cuz that would be kind of cool. It would be it would be interesting seeing the It's it's there are like, you know, obviously there are limitations as to what you can or how many objects you can place and and what you can do with them, but it's still kind of cool cuz like Hold on. Uh, what if I use this? So with this, can I then place... Okay, so I use that up. And then... Okay, so is this supposed to be like one for each person? I think maybe for this demo, they probably limited it to... Uh, to 10 per spawner um and it's kind of cool that you have the save because they they added the save feature so i'm wondering if it's like okay later on they're gonna add more more uh they're gonna up the cap here and then they'll allow you to add objects and transform them in various ways so that way you can build you can build your own kind of you know 3d space 
that's kind of cool. These are these are primitive shapes, right? So like it, it's not like you can make something special with it, but you can still do quite a bit with it. Even with these primitive shapes, you can do quite a bit. Um, people can get creative with what they want to do. It's not like you can build, you know, fully optimized models. And I, and I don't think that's the idea with this tool either. I think the idea is just to be able to create the space around you. Um, so I'm excited to see how how they proceed with this. This world is called VRC Designer, and it is made by Vaughan. That is this person. Uh, go go check out their other worlds as well. They've made a bunch of cool stuff. Okay, so that is going to be it for the community meetup event. Uh, I do need to close VR chat and open up my project, which is going to be, it's probably going to take like 10 to 15 minutes because the project takes some time to open up in Unity. Um, now we can either do that or we can try to learn how to do networking in Godot. To be honest, as much as I like Godot, and I, I will be streaming more, you know, learning Godot and stuff like that. Um, at the same time, I don't want to abandon my VTubing project. I definitely want to keep working on it and adding features and stuff. Because like that was... That was the whole idea, right? Um, I would like to, I would like to make like a bare bones version of it in Godot, and I'm being honest here, solely because of the fact that the project opens up quick and there's quick iteration time. That is why I'm considering doing it in Godot because it is, it is much less of a headache. It is much less of a headache doing it in Godot uh, than it is doing it in Unity. The problem is I'm a beginner in Godot. So anything complex that I want to do, I have to first figure out what I want to do. Then I have to figure out how I can do it in Godot. So I'm going to have two challenges there. But if I'm using Unity, a tool that I've used for a good decade now, and I have a lot of knowledge and experience in, then I would just need to figure out what exactly I'm trying to do and then do that because I know how to do it already, you know? So, yeah, yeah. Okay, anyways, we're going we're gonna to move into Unity. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to switch to the BRB screen. I'm going to mute the mic and it seems like the music has paused so I'm going to carry on playing that. I'm going to mute the mic and I guess I'll I'll take a break for like 10 15 minutes. We will take a break for 10 to 15 minutes because well, uh VR chat has to close and then Unity the project has to open. So yeah, it's all going to take some time. So just just enjoy the music, I guess.
Dude, you know what I'm really tempted to do? I'm like super tempted to start working on a new world building project. I'm super tempted. But I'm wondering if I should wait because Unity, I mean, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Uh, I can upgrade. I, I can upgrade my project later on, um, so it's fine. But like, Unity is not Unity. VR Chat is moving into Unity twenty twenty two. They are currently in twenty twenty. They are currently in twenty nineteen. Like that's the that's the version that we use to build uh, to build worlds. But in the beta version, they have already moved to 2022, and they're starting. That is that is how they're testing out the 2022 version. And the next upgrade that we're gonna have is not gonna be uh, Unity 2020. It's gonna be directly from 2019 directly to 2022, which is amazing. Wait, let me just confirm that. Did they say 2022 or 2021? Hold on. Let me just confirm that so I'm not giving wrong information. Because I remember reading that in the in the blog post in the de which uh, fuck I need to finish reading that that dev log. It was posted like eleven days ago. Uh, they mentioned it here. Okay, rough roadmap. Unity twenty twenty two. Yeah. Okay. So twenty twenty two. Um. So they mentioned Unity 2022 VR chat is in open beta right now and will stay on 2022. Uh, even if future tests, even if future test builds need to go out. At some point during the 2022 open beta, we'll push a beta 2022 SDK and provide migration steps. It should be fairly straightforward, especially with the creator companion handling it. All right. Uh, eventually, once we are okay with the state of the open beta, we'll push to live. Okay. Right. So. Now. Here's what I'm thinking. Do I... What do I feel like doing right now, dude? Do I want to open up my... Because like, I haven't opened up the Unity project just yet. So I'm thinking, what should we do? Should we go into, actually, now that I think about it, should we go into avatar stuff or should we go into uh, world building stuff? Because, like, if I do get into the world building, I mean, I'm already into world building, but, like, if I do create a world building project, something that I've, I haven't had the chance to explore a whole lot um, for a long time now is the networking side of things. So that is definitely something I would want to explore more. Um, there's also compute shader stuff that I want to do, which VRChat doesn't have support for compute shaders, but like, well, not, I mean, I want to do compute shader stuff, but like I have to use, because VRChat doesn't support compute shaders, so I have to use, uh, uh, custom render textures and shaders for that. Um, there is some stuff that I wanted to make when it comes to like world building stuff. Um... So I could do that with world building. I could also, if I wanted to go into the avatar side of things, I could set up. I could I could set up uh, an AV3 avatar. We could read through the whole thing and you know try try. I don't know messing around with. Should I do that? Hmm. 
Hmm. I'm wondering. Because, like, all of a sudden, I got the thought. I was like, dude, why don't we do something different? Let's do something different. Let me let me take a look at the um Is this the right keyboard? Okay, yeah. So VR chat A V three. Oh I, I forgot they don't call it A V three. Uh they just call it Avatars three point zero, I think. VR chat. Okay, let's just VR chat avatars. Because like they stopped doing the avatars 2.0 thing a while back. <laughs> Wait, shit. I had completely forgotten about this website, VRC mods. I completely forgot about this website. I didn't. I didn't know this was still a thing. I haven't heard about the site in ages. I mean, people probably still, you know, get stuff off of there. But like, uh, a while back, I was seeing a bunch of people discouraging getting stuff off of there. First of all, because like, not necessarily always safe. Um, second, it's not necessarily always... Um, how do I put this? Legally or ethically acquired. Um, in other words, sometimes the shit that gets posted on there does not belong to the poster. It doesn't belong to the uploader. So, I, I, I'd been seeing people discouraging the usage of that website. I don't know if that situation has changed now or not. I personally never got anything off of that website because I'm a little too paranoid about security so I'm not just gonna go onto any random website just because a bunch of people are downloading shit that other people are uploading I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that uh, I'm pretty picky about where I get assets from um, so like I usually don't end up on on such sites but I have seen other people have issues even getting shit from these kinds of sites. Anyways, anyways. Okay, so avatars. Uh, VRChat allows you to create and upload custom avatars, creating avatars, so and so, so and so, so and so, rig requirements. Um, okay. What is avatars 3.0? Okay, playable layers. All right. You know what? Yeah. Let's do something different today. I know I know I was planning on uh doing I know I was planning I was planning on working on my VTubing setup, but I I guess I can do that off stream. Uh for now. I think what I'm going to do is open up Fuck, I think I need to I think I need to update the creator companion as well. I forgot what the creator companion icon looks like. Oh, there it is. Okay. I haven't opened it in so long that I forgot what the damn thing looks like. Okay, so I'm going to open up uh, we're gonna start. We're gonna start a new uh, avatar project, and we're gonna learn about avatars 3.0. So I'm gonna change. So I guess I guess we're gonna stay in the. I guess we're gonna stay in the uh, VR chat category. Actually, yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna edit my stream info. I can change the tags here. Uh, we can add stuff like Unity. Uh, work with me. Actually, this one will be study with me. Um, I 
Okay, okay. Alright, so I've changed that. I'm wondering if I should go into just chatting or if I should stay in VR chat. Um, okay, we can change the name. So VR chatting, then VR chat avataring. Great. I I just noticed I butchered a couple of the spellings because this fucking keyboard that I'm using is on its way out and so it is having all sorts of issues. Like it it'll sometimes just not register keeper actually a lot of times. Now these days it's like a lot more than it was before, which is weird because like this was one of my one of my like favorite keyboards. Um, okay, hold on. We are chatting, then we are chat avataring. Okay. Great. Done. Okay, so I haven't switched from the BRB screen yet because I haven't created the project yet. So I need to figure out. Wait, the creator companion has an update. Should I update the creator com companion right now? I haven't updated it in a while. Okay, it's not that big of... Well, I mean... Nah, nah, I don't want to do that right now. Okay, so we have... Alright, so we're going to create a new project. It's going to be an avatar project. Okay. Um, where should I place this? Uh, maybe I should create a separate directory for VR chat avatars. I feel like, I feel like that's a good idea. Uh, work projects. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like that's a good idea. Um, Let's pick a new folder. And here we can have a separate project. A separate folder, VRChat avatars. And then here we can create another folder. Yeah, okay. Uh, so here we're going to create another folder, learning AV3. AV3 proj01. Um, I don't know if it makes too much sense to name it in this way, because I don't think there's going to be a learning AV3 proj02. Because I can probably create the next few avatars in the same project. But it's an old habit adding proj01 or even 01 at the end of something. Just in case there's going to be a next one. Because um, not... Well, adding it doesn't have any drawbacks. Not adding it does have a drawback where there won't be symmetry there. Um... Because like then it'll be oh, proj, but then proj o two. But now it'll be proj o one, and if there ever is a proj o two, then there'll be a proj o two. Okay, so this is done. Um, it is not letting me. Oh, okay. So I have to select the type of. I have to select the template. I like the way that they've done this, dude. I want to show you guys this like 
their the, the way that they've set up these banners and stuff that they've set up for each of the templates it's it's really nice also fuck i haven't touched uh udon graph in ages like once i went once i started using udon sharp i just never looked back i'm sure they must have improved the tools um now the tools are probably a lot better now than they were before but like back then man it was a struggle and given that i i, I already had like a decade's worth of experience in c sharp going into the udon sharp side it was it made perfect sense right it just makes things so much easier especially since i'm again i've been programming i've been coding typing code for a decade so suddenly moving into a visual scripting workflow just doesn't work for me it is way too tedious for me to do that i've done it that's why i'm saying that i've i've done it the way the state of visual scripting right now it is i don't know if it's i don't know if it's the best like it gets shit done um it's it's great if you're somebody who doesn't have programming experience like for example if you're if you're an artist um on a team and you need to do some quick prototyping uh and you don't want to you know bother the programmer uh or you don't want to wait for the programmer to get that shit done you can like do the prototyping yourself real quick using visual scripting um but even setting that up it's kind of tedious because you have to like create a whole bunch of nodes you have to connect shit together and simple like few lines of code can become like 10 20 nodes i wish i was exaggerating about that and especially when you take into account that there's there's like expressions that you can create in in code but then those same expressions doing them in 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 visual scripting it can be a nightmare unless there is something that unless there's a specialized node that helps you evaluate those kinds of expressions so it can get really complicated when you try to fit the coding workflow into visual scripting it's great for simple stuff um but like the more complex you try to get with things the more the more the more of a bad time you're gonna have and i've i've noticed this with like a lot of different scripting workflows uh be it udon graph be, be it jolt be it playmaker be it uh unreal's blueprint system i've never even used unreal's blueprint system and even there i can tell you it's the same issue like you you run into that issue and i'm not trying to shit on on people who are trying to make these workflows they're doing the best that they can and if there was a better way to go about it they they probably would have gone about it a better way right they but but like they're doing what they can right now it's just that the way that things are being done right now it's a little tedious to to do visual scripting cuz like when you try to do complex things when you try to build complex systems it can quickly become a nightmare i cannot imagine i've told this before is that i cannot imagine having to build uh my virtual file system using udon graph that would have been a nightmare like yikes dude that would have been horrible okay anyways we're going to we're going to create this project and i'm going to jump into okay so it's doing it's doing its thing here in the meantime i think i'm going to create the the private window and open up avatars documentation so vr chat avatars avatar systems uh oh shit okay that's cool I haven't seen this being advertised a whole lot. Ready Player Me. I've seen that being advertised. But 
Taffy and what's this other one? Make Avatar. That's cool. That's cool. But yeah, that's not what I was looking for. I was looking for the do for the documentation. All right. Uh, Creators.vrchat.com. So we're going to look into that. Um, you guys are still looking at the BRB screen. Uh, what we can what we can do is for the time being, I can switch to like the bigger the bigger uh, window capture, so you guys can see the browser and that. Oh, I should also open up my my VTubing app. I just realized that. Uh Oh, also another thing I want to look into before I finish before this project is finished creating, I want to look into uh Avatar emulator cuz apparently it's supposed to have like, you know, close to full feature parity with actually testing out your avatar this is i believe this is made by luma and um, it's supposed to allow you to test your avatar in the editor itself which is crazy it's great because you you don't have to you don't have to like upload the avatar um though i think their other workflow worked fine as well like they had another workflow where you could do like a local upload of your avatar so nobody else could see it uh only you could see it and it made testing a little easier it made I iteration a little easier but like with with this emulator you don't even have to open up vr chat like it, you can from what i understand you can just test it in uh in the editor All right, so what all are we looking at here? Okay, AV3 emulator, an emulator for VRChat's Avatar 3.0 system. Uh, Avatar's 3.0 manager, a tool for managing uh, playable layers and parameters for Avatar's 3.0. Okay, I didn't know that was a thing. Okay, that's cool. Uh, easy quest switch, uh, VR, VR World Toolkit, audio link. Okay, let me take a look at AV. What, what is it called? AV3 emulator. Let me let me just take a look at the documentation for it. I don't know if the VRChat uh, website have put it in their creator section. Okay, um, okay, okay, should emulate most features of uh, Avatars 3.0, test non-local syncing by duplicating or clicking the create non-local clone checkbox, okay supports live viewing and editing within unity's animator window use the animator to debug drop down to select which layer is visualized in the animator window uh, shows tracking slash animation in the inspector uh, custom expression menus supports viewing so and so i wonder i wonder if i should do it without the emulator first yeah, I wonder if I should do it without the emulator. Okay, go to tools and select uh, Avatar's 3.0 emulator. This will add an object to your scene. You can always remove it if you don't want it to run. Use this object to set default VR mode, tracking type, or animator to debug settings. To emulate walking and movement, click the avatar and scroll down to the inspector scroll down the inspector to the bottom section with luma av 
runtime component. Uh, here you can change stuff. It also supports live interacting with the animator. Wow, okay, Luma has done a bunch of work. Actually, a bunch of other people have also done a crazy amount of work on this. Holy shit. This is crazy, dude. This is amazing to see. I'm looking at the GitHub. Maybe I should... Okay, hold up. Um, while this is creating... Yeah, so we're not going to add it just yet. Maybe I can probably add it later on. I hope I can add it easily later on. Um, for now, I'm just going to open the project. So it is opening up right now in 2019. And hopefully that's going to be done soon. So in the meantime, we're going to transition and open this up. Actually, we're going to transition back real quick. Let me open up uh, AV3 emulator. All right, so we're going to transition back now. <laughs> Actually, we're going to transition back again because I need to take a small, a small break for like two or three minutes. I will be right back. Uh, all this time I could have taken a short break, but like I got busy doing a bunch of like the other reading stuff and all. So I will be right back two or three minutes and then we should be good to go.
استمع إلى الموسيقى بدون إعلانات وبلا إنترنت وفي الخلفية جرب يوتيوب ميوزك بريميوم مجانا All right, I am back. Uh, the project is not done creating just yet. Um, that's how it is with Unity. It takes some time. Uh, give me, <laughs> give me like thirty seconds, Marty. All right. So we are going to learn about Avatars 3.0. Now, I looked into Avatars 3.0 back in the day when it first came out. I didn't get too deep into it. Uh, I opened up a project did a couple of things here and there then i realized there was a bunch more reading that i had to do and then i just got distracted with something else and um i left it because i was i was more interested in world building at the time i still am more interested in world building but like there's some stuff that i want to do um some avatar related stuff that i want to do that because of which I need to learn Avatars 3.0. Um, this is probably my third attempt at learning. The issue was never not being able to understand. The issue was that I just couldn't give enough time to it and I just kept getting distracted. So, I guess this time around, we are going to get distracted. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Um, so, um, Avatars, the AV3 emulator. At some point in time, I think it's going to be beneficial for me to start using this as well. But for the time being, because I'm a, well, I'm still pretty much a beginner in uh, Avatars 3.0, uh, I think I should stick to the bare bones stuff once i have a good hang of av3 um once i'm more comfortable with like all of the options that av3 pro provides then i can look into uh the emulator so i don't know if i'm gonna be able to i think i think we're gonna be doing a whole lot of reading today i don't think we're gonna do a whole lot of like practical stuff you know what who knows? Maybe I might. Maybe the next few streams might just be learning AV3, because at the very least, because I, I, I don't want to do, I don't want to do like you know flashy animations and all that shit. Um, whoever wants to do it, great, enjoy. I'm more interested in setting up a basic avatar and being able to, at the very least, hook up the avatar parameters with various things. So, uh, either controlling the parameters using shaders or controlling shaders using the parameters. Um, that's definitely one thing I want to do. I want to control the shaders using parameters, which I, I think maybe I might need to involve a certain level of animation in there. Another thing I want to do is control the parameters using OSC. So... That's kind of where my mind is at. I want to control the parameters using OSC. And the data that I'm going to be sending is going to be body tracking data. Because like VRChat doesn't provide you with... I, I really wish they did this. I really wish they provided us with 
a jank ass solution they're not going to do that because like it's it, it's going to make the product look bad but i really wish that they provided us with a jank ass solution or just a solution no matter no matter how how jank it may be just provide us with a solution as to how i can send i how i as a non vr user a desktop user can send in tracking data and have it be accepted as vr tracking data i need that kind of a solution from vr chat and i i know they're not going to do that because well first of all why are they going to put time and effort into something that's going to look like shit like the whole idea there is like okay it's it's a jank solution if you do if you are able to provide tracking data it's probably not going to be as good as actual vr tracking data right so it's going to look like shit if they know it's going to look like shit it's maybe it's going to perform like shit i don't know why given all of these factors why are they going to put time and money into developing that kind of a feature so i get it they're not going to do it but if they did it that would be great you know cuz that would make things a lot easier for me i would happily write one two three or more layers of programs that would run on my system in order to process tracking data that i can then send into into vr chat problem is right now the only way i can send send something into vr chat is osc and osc doesn't necessarily allow you to like i mean they have osc for quest tracking but unfortunately that only applies to quest um you're you're very limited in in how you can use that at least to my understanding because i've tried and it doesn't really doesn't really work well i mean w- what i'm saying is it doesn't really work for desktop it might work well for osc what i'm trying to do is have a solution where i can send in tracking data osc osc where i can send in tracking data via osc into vr chat and then have a system do something with that so for the time being um i want to try and set it up using avatar 3.0 later on when osc for worlds becomes a thing then i can set up a slightly different solution uh which would allow people to send in tracking data and have an avatar be tracked in a sort it's not going to be the avatar I'm, there's going to be a whole lot of like faking going on there but at the very least you are going to be able to send in tracking data and communicate the whole idea is being able to communicate you're going to be able to convey body language that's the more important thing that's what i'm trying to achieve um but yeah dude let's let's see let's see how that goes Okay, so the project is still creating. Oh, cool. Okay, the editor has opened up. Great. Awesome. Uh we need to give it a little bit. Uh in the meantime, we can we can start the reading thing. Let me just drink some water real quick and then we can start reading. Okay, cool. So, uh let's start reading. Should I maybe zoom in? How how does the thing 
Oh, just a second. We seem to have some errors here. Um, okay, okay. Okay. Are we good now? I think we are good. Maybe, maybe we are good. I'm not sure. Um. Okay. Wait, there's an examples thing here. Um. You can find them from the menu. Wait, there's examples here. Hold up, dude. Uh, VR chat SDK samples. Wait, is it examples for avatars or uh, examples for uh, avatar dynamics robot avatar? Man, I haven't heard that name in a while. Avatar dynamics. What did that do? I forgot. I forgot what that's about. Was that relating to the physics thing? Hold on. I haven't heard that name in ages. Uh, VR chat avatar dynamics. Uh, avatar dynamics. It's for physics and oh, okay, yeah. So it was like the, uh, it was their it was their implementation of uh fizzbones and the ability to interact with other people's uh fizzbones, because like previously prior to avatar dynamics, um, people were people were using a package called I I believe the package was called fizzbones. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I, I believe it was called Fizzbones. Was it called Fizzbones? Just a second. Fizzbones is a set of components that allows you, that lets you add secondary motion to Avatar. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. No, was it called Fizzbones? No, no, no. What was, what was the other thing called? Um... Prior to Fizzbones. Fizzbones is a VR Chat's thing. What was the other one called? Hold on. Uh, VR Chat. Bone Dynamics? Dynamic Bones? Uh, Dynamic Bone is a very performance heavy component and it's easy for an avatar creator to overuse the component. Avatar dynamic bone limits. Okay. VRChat has provided a method by which users can limit the number of dynamic bones permitted on avatars. Oh, okay. I think that's what it was called. Dynamic bone. It wasn't called fizz bone. My bad. I, I don't know if I earlier said that fizz, the, the package was called fizz bones. But prior to avatar dynamics, I believe this is what they were using. It was called dynamic bone. Um... And people people would use this to add all sorts of like uh, various types of bone physics. Uh, anything from like actual, you know, what would be considered human humanoid bones, uh, from from humanoid bones to movable parts in your avatar, stuff like I don't know hair or any anything that's dangling here and there and like chains and stuff. People people made all sorts of cool stuff with it. And um, initially, the this package was one of the few whitelisted packages. So, like, you could buy this package off of the asset store, and then you could, um, then you could add these components to. So it's not it's not the package that was whitelisted. It was the components that were whitelisted. So basically, you could you could use uh, dynamic bone components in your avatar and it would work in uh in vr chat now okay we have this tutorial robot thing which is great so i don't need to create a rig i'm assuming i don't need to create a rig i don't need to create a mesh because i have the robot mesh uh i wonder if the hair is if the hair and the tail are like separate parts or if because i'm okay with this i'm perfectly fine with this hold on um 
Is all of this part of the same mesh? Yeah, it seems like all of this is part of the same mesh. All right, dude. Cool. Uh, and then I think they've set up bones as well here. Right? Wait. Okay, so I'm seeing a capsule collider here. Where are the bones? What do the bones look like? We are probably not going to get into bones until like much. Are these are these the bones? Oh, I think these are the bones. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you have these. Wait. Um. Yeah. I think these are the bones. Yeah, I probably should have been looking at the hair. And I think I can see why they chose to add these these parts to i believe this is robot kyle um i i i think i see why they chose to add the fuck i just noticed i'm not in the editor okay hold on well i mean on on stream i'm not in the editor <sighs> give me a second let me switch okay so we don't need game capture. We need the f second large one, I think. What does the first large one look like? Why is it not cropped that well? Is that meant to be the one that I use for Unity? I think that's meant to be the one I use for Unity. All right, okay. So we're gonna switch to Unity. Awesome great and then we're gonna bring up the other one which uh i think this is yeah and we are good so we're gonna transition and done great wait did the music stop i just noticed that yep music got paused Okay, cool. We should be fine now. Also, let me turn on shuffle so it shuffles between various tracks. All right. So, this is what I was looking at, right? Um, what I was saying is, uh, this is this is a this is the robot Kyle avatar, the robot Kyle mesh, and uh, it makes sense that they decided to wait. Where did these where did these bones go? Hold on, hold on, dude. This speed is a little too high. Let me turn the speed down. Let's go down to like zero point seven. Okay, let's go a little lower. Okay, let's go a little lower. That's better. All right. So, I I don't remember what the shortcut was. I don't know if if unit if Unity has a shortcut for slow movement. It has one for fast movement, but not for slow movement. But anyways, um, here are the fizz bones. So where all are these bones going? Definitely have them for the hair. I'm trying to trace them and see if they're doing anything in any other body parts or if it's just for the hair and the ears and of course the tail. Well, anyways, uh, this is their solution of uh, this is their solution for dynamic bone. Uh, this is their own solution called Fizz Bones, and it's part of a package called Avatar Dynamics, uh, which includes uh, both Fizz Bones and the ability to interact with your own. Fizz bones and other people's uh, fizz bones as well. 
which is where it gets interesting because like when you're able to interact with other people's fist bones then you can have like interesting effects i haven't dived too deep into that yet so i don't know to what extent you're able to customize the behavior like are you able to trigger something when uh when there's a touch on a bone um that'll be that'll be worth looking into Okay. Um. All right. Let's carry on reading. Okay. So. VR chat allows you to create and upload custom avatars. Uh, creating avatars. To get started, check out creating your first avatar. Uh, there's a whole avatars category on the sidebar to check out. Here are some of the more some of the more impactful and important pages. Uh, rig requirements explains how to set up your custom 3D models hierarchy in VR chat. So this is something I need to look into. Back in the day, VR chat required a specific rig setup. And if you didn't have that specific rig setup, well, I mean, it's not that it required something super specific. I make it sound like VR chat needed their own like fucking custom rig setup. No, it's it's not that's not true. They needed a rig setup, is what I mean. That was a requirement. You needed a rig setup. Otherwise, animations wouldn't work. So like, that's why my avatar doesn't, like in, in my avatar, everything is done like in the shader, including animations, right? But like if anyone wanted to set up an avatar with custom animations and stuff, at least back in the day, they wouldn't be able to unless they had, unless they had a rig. Um, but from my understanding, after Avatars 3.0 came out, like that system was redesigned, and I think they then removed the requirement for a rig. I could be wrong about that, but I remember reading somewhere and even talking to a couple of people who told me, a couple of people who were, who were very knowledgeable in Avatar building, like way, way more knowledgeable than me in Avatar building, they told me that. Um, the rig isn't necessarily a requirement anymore, um, at least for animations. I don't know to what extent that is true. I want to find out though. Um, I'm not going to look into optimization tips just yet. I need to learn the basics first. Um, wait, so there's a section for creating your first avatar. But then there's this stuff. Oh yeah, I've read all of this before. Like I said, I, I mean, like I mentioned before, I've, uh, I've read through some of these pages. Um, so like, I, I know a bunch of these things, but like, I never got a chance to go too deep into it. You know what? Okay, we'll skim through the page real quick. Uh, rig requirements. This page is significantly out of date, but should still mostly be accurate. Humanoid rig. Humanoid, humanoid avatar must have head, hands, feet. Must have head, hands, and feet bones mapped. You will see this message from the VR chat build control panel if your avatar rig is humanoid but does not have the essential bones mapped. Okay. Um, when exporting your rig from your 3D editor of choice, ensure your coordinate settings are correct. Most of the time, the defaults are correct. For Blender, ensure that your rest X rotation is 90 degrees. So fortunately, I do know a little bit about rigging in Blender. 
Um, at the very least, I know the basics. So I, I don't have to like worry too much about, you know, having to learn a whole lot of that. Besides, there are tools that allow you to just generate a rig. Um, so I'm not going to need to worry too much about that. If your avatar diverges greatly from human, i.e. quadruped, hunching monster, etc., you should consider using a generic rig and your own animation controller. See the simple avatar controller for an example. This is, a, this is more advanced than making a humanoid, so you should be very familiar with Unity's animation controller system. Okay, uh, finger mappings. Okay, I'm not gonna go into that yet. Spine hierarchy, okay. So for the time being, fortunately, since we have this uh, robot Kyle avatar, I think I can do a bunch of things on this itself because I'm assuming this has a rig because it's an example avatar. So I'm assuming it has a, it has a rig set up. Yeah, I don't think I need to look too deep into this kind of thing. This, by the way, is something I looked into back in the day. And this was how I managed to sort of trick the system into displaying a message. Even when my shader is not shown. That was how I was able to let people know. Like, uh, this was how I was able to let people know that hey, all of the effects and everything in this avatar are done in the shader. So like, if you're seeing a white cube, it's probably because you have shaders turned off. Um, okay. Maybe we should look into this. Is that, is that where it was leading us? Creating your first avatar? Okay, yeah, all right, cool. So I guess this is gonna give us the whole step-by-step -step thing. Oh, this is where the avatar systems thing comes in. So this is what I was mentioning earlier, that like, I haven't seen the, the systems mentioned a whole lot. One system that I have seen mentioned was Ready Player Me. Um, this was a couple of years ago. So the idea was, at least back then, the idea was that um, you could... Uh, you could you could let it take a photo of you or take a video of you I, I forgot i think it was a photo you could let it take a photo of you and then based on your photo it could it would generate an avatar for you it would generate a model for you not just a model it would it would do all of the other stuff as well from my understanding it would do a bunch of the other work as well rigging setting up the avatar and you could like directly post the thing to vr chat uh, I don't know how, how good it was at doing that, but like that was an option. You could also like download the model if you wanted. And a, a bunch of <clears throat> a bunch of people did it back in the day. Um and there's these other systems as well, something called Taffy, something called Make Avatar. I've never used any of these. I haven't even used Ready Player Me. I've just seen other people using it. Um I'm probably not going to use any of them. I have used Vroid Studio. Uh, that was fun. Yeah, I could create... Yeah, I didn't think about that. I could I could just create like a basic humanoid uh, mesh. Because like the idea is to set up an avatar, right? The idea is not to make like a nice, good-looking humanoid avatar. So I can just take any, any base mesh. Shit, for that matter, I could just stick with Robot Kyle. Like if... If that's the situation, I could just stick with Robot Card because like I'm I'm just trying to learn how to set up the avatar and how to do various things. 
I'm not trying to learn how to make it look good. I'm trying to learn how to do fun stuff with it. So I'm trying to understand the inner workings. So for the time being, I don't give a shit about if it looks good or not. Robot car looks nice though. Like. So, find a model. Okay. Get the model into your project. Get the model into a scene. Okay, so this takes us through like a step-by-step -step thing. So we're going to read the whole thing. For some reason, my frame rate is just shit right now. I don't know what's going on. Do I, do I have the display capture on by any chance? No, I don't. Because display capture, it, the performance is shit. I can understand, but like... Oh, give me a second. I need to. I need to hydrate. We are at three hours of the stream. I'm. I'm planning on going longer. Um, a lot longer. Um, I mean, I, I'm already feeling the stress while talking, but like, it's fine. I'll. I'll go. I think I'll keep on going and maybe tomorrow I'll take a break. Maybe. I don't know. I'll see. If I feel like streaming tomorrow as well, then I'll just turn on the stream because I... If I get a chance to stream, I kind of don't want to let go of that opportunity because there are days where I don't get a chance to stream. So, like, if I do get a chance to stream, I don't want to let go of that opportunity. But at the same time, usually the day after the community meetup because like community meetup streams or at least the days when i'm streaming the community meetup my streams usually run a little longer like you know four hours but usually my streams aren't more than maybe two hours one and a half maybe two hours um where was i going with this oh yeah Usually, the day after the community meetup stream, my vocal cords are like super stressed. So, I have to take a break. I should be taking a break, but at the same time, if I get a chance to stream even the next day, I'm going to take that opportunity and I'll stream. Um, so, yeah, let's see. Let's see. Anyways, let's uh, carry on reading this thing. Let's, let's skim through this page. And then we can read this page and set up a basic avatar. I believe local testing requ requires you to uh, open up the client. I don't remember if that's like a local build of the client or... Like, are you able to get people into an instance? Like, is it is it like firing up a local a local version of your... A local test build of your world is it is it kind of like that hold on let's see where going to the build tab checking if the avatar is okay oh the, wait local testing was before that let's read the local testing thing adding an avatar wait hold up dude are we missing something here there was local testing somewhere here right am i just jumping around way too much and i'm missing it Okay, that's the build tab. Fine. Building and uploading your avatar. Enjoy your avatar. Oh, was it on a different page maybe? Oh, I think local testing was here. Yeah, local avatar testing. Yeah, so let's read this. Alright, what is avatar? Uh, Avatars 3.0? Uh, Avatars 3.0 is our name for... All of the features available for avatars in which in which no in vr chat av3's features are focused on improving expression performance and the ability of and the abilities of avatars in vr chat uh av3 
is heavily integrated with the action menu for controlling and interacting with the avatar you're wearing. It's probably best if you hop in and try out the action menu before building an AV3 avatar. All right, I've done that. Great. I think I I I think I also tested out some stuff with the action menu. But this was like a year or two ago. Like tested out like AV3 stuff with the action menu. Anyways, uh understanding the concepts in order to understand and use AV3, you need to know a few concepts. These concepts will help you understand the construction of avatars, how, to how, how best to assemble them, and the intended use of various systems. Unity systems. Uh, this document is written with the assumption that you know a bit about Unity animators. In particular, you should, you should ensure you have basic working knowledge of animators and animations animator layer animator layers layer weights and blending states and transitions animator parameters state behaviors and avatar masks it also helps <clears throat> it can also help to know about things like state exit time loop time for animations time sync between layers and blend trees all right, so we, we'll get into the animation side of it later. Basics. With Avatars 3.0, you can create a basic avatar with simulated eye movement and visemes very quickly. Import your avatar, uh, rig as humanoid, set up your materials, etc. Add the avatar descriptor component, Define the eye bones you want. Define the eye bones if you want simulated eye movement. Define the visine type if you want visemes. Assign the jaw flap bone in the rigging configuration uh, rigging configuration screen, or define your visemes by blend shapes, same as Avatar 2.0. Set your viewport. Uh, build and upload. All right. Okay. So I'm guessing the jaw flapping thing is for talking. Eye movement is obviously eye movement. Um, how do you simulate eye movement on desktop? Is it like guessing where I'm trying to look based on what direction the camera is pointing in? I'm kind of curious about that. Because like with Quest, I believe it has eye tracking, right? Uh, I don't know about PC VR, but Quest has eye tracking. But like on desktop, what exactly is it doing? Or is it just wrong? <laughs> is, is the simulated eye movement, does it just come out wrong? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. If you are making a non-humanoid -human avatar, uh, please read the generic avatars section below. Uh, you're done. This will create a basic avatar with default gestures and actions. There's some built-in things you can take advantage of. So even if some slaps, even if someone slaps in an avatar with blend shapes slash bones named a certain way, you'll get some basic AV3 features. However, even with these basic upgraded systems, there are some new features. All right, local avatar testing. Ever wanted to iterate and test an avatar without uploading it? Well, the avatars 3.0, uh, well, with AV3, um, now you can. In the builder tab of the VRC, uh, the VRChat SDK control panel, you can now select build and test at offline testing section. When you click this, your avatar will be built and then copied into a folder. When you launch VR chat, you'll be able to access this avatar locally by looking in the other section of the avatar menu. Only you will be able to see it, but you can make changes to your avatar, click build and test again, and after a short build, your avatar will be updated. 
simply reselect the avatar in your menu and click change again and you'll swap into the new testing avatar. This avatar is only visible to you. Uh, to everyone else, you'll look... Is the music still going? Okay, cool. Uh, to everyone else, you'll look like you're wearing the last avatar you were wearing before swapping into the local test avatar. Uh, where was I? Okay, yeah. For our AV3 testers, this made iteration a ton faster. We hope you like it. I remember reading this back in the day. I remember reading this. To delete to delete the copied local test avatar, go to your content manager tab of the VRChat SDK control panel. You will see your avatar in test avatars section at the bottom. Click delete and it will disappear from other section of the avatar menu when you reopen it. Cool. Simulated eye movement. Simulated eye movement is where your eyes will move around looking at things around you. This isn't eye tracking as in we don't have a way for you to input data from eye tracking devices, but it's a pretty good way of making your avatar look more alive. Wait, really? I thought quest eye tracking was a thing, wasn't it? Uh, maybe maybe this part of the documentation hasn't been updated or maybe I have wrong information. I'm not sure anyways um, Where was that? Yeah, you can preview your setup in the editor and adjust how your eyes How your avatars eyes look in a combination of states Which are used to determine how your eye bones are set up Okay Blinking can be handled via blend shapes or bones. Uh, blend shapes are the usual method, but we included bones as well to allow for more setup, for more setups. Blinking blend shapes, bl blinking blend shapes are defined by three blend shapes described below. Uh, blink, both eyes are blinking. Look up. Blend shape used when looking up. Use this to tweak eye, iris, lid, eyebrow positioning and look down. Blend shape when looking down. Use this similarly to look up. Okay. Uh, Alright, okay. In addition to these two sliders, uh, one goes from calm to excited. And so and so, so and so, so and so. Okay. You learn more about this when we talk about state behaviors. But you can set states in your animator to disable eye animations when you reach when you reach that state. Uh, you can set it up such that you don't have to worry about your blend shapes being overridden because your happy mode closes your eyes and blinking is still firing off. And your blinking is still firing off. All right, blend shape slash bone based visings. Uh, if you want to stick with the standard jaw flap bone or blend shape based visings, uh, we've got you covered. Both are still present and work just fine. In addition, you can now configure the angle of the jaw flap bone visine for some additional customization. However, in AV3, you can also access the animator parameter, which indicates which visine should be currently playing this means okay so this is interesting because like visemes and blend shapes these are two concepts that i'd been meaning to dive into in blender a while back i just never got around to it a lot of animation stuff in blender i just i don't get too deep into it like i look at it for some time study it for some time practice it for a little bit and then just move on to other stuff i just barely ever do animation stuff in blender um not that i hate it it's just that i guess i'm just not that interested in it i i, I don't know how else to put it
Dude, I'm getting super hungry and I'm wondering if I should carry on streaming and finish the stream and then go eat, which is probably going to be another like 45 minutes or if I should go and eat right now. Actually, no, no, uh, no, 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 I'll finish, I'll finish the stream. Okay. Um, this means if you can animate it, you can use it in a visine. No more trickery for 2D mouths, robots, whatever. You can just animate whatever you like for your visines. The visine animator parameter is updated in all visine modes. I. Oh, yeah, okay. I think I remember the visine thing being mentioned in osc as well i wonder if that was controllable by or maybe i'm just mixing up the two okay okay we'll we'll first let's learn how to do parameters in uh, av3 then we'll look into controlling parameters via osc Proxy animations. You will probably notice that the SDK includes a bunch of animations named proxy animation. Proxy underscore animation name. These, these animations are placeholders for a variety of default VRChat animations. If you use an animation uh, that starts with proxy, VRChat will attempt to replace it with a built-in one. This can be done in any playable layer. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, so like if you have an avatar, but you don't have specific animations for it, you can just ask VRChat to like fill it in for you. That's convenient. Um, although, although we will not replace an animation with a proxy underscore prefix, if the suffix does not match one of the built-in uh, animation, one of our built-in animations, it is probably best practice to avoid naming any of your animations with the prefix proxy underscore. Use auto footstep. Uh, this is an option in the AV3 avatar descriptor. It is on by default. Use auto footstep only applies to three point or four point tracking. Turning it off means you'll be disabling the procedural lower body animation for room scale movement. Okay, this is not for me then. Force locomotion animations. Isn't that also like a either a VR or FBT th uh, FBT thing? Seems like it. Okay, write defaults on states. Write defaults on states. Write defaults is an option uh, available on states and animations in Unity. Write defaults on will write back the default values of all animated properties. Uh, on a controller-wide basis that are not animated in that particular state. This reminds me, I should look into Godot's animation system. Because VRChat's animation system is like a lot of, no, not VRChat, Unity's animation system has pretty much always been black box, like a black box technology kind of thing. Um, but with Godot, we have an option, we have the opportunity to, to study, to study exactly how this system works and get a better understanding. Cause like the thing with unity is that a lot of, at least like back in the day, a lot of the technology was black box, right? 
the core was especially black box. Um, and like they did that on purpose. They even mentioned it. And like, I don't hold it against them. Like, dude, okay, it's you're, you're a business. And if you feel like keeping a trade secret is what's keeping you in business, by all means, keep that trade secret. If that's what helps you survive, or if you think that that's what's going to help you survive, then by all means, do that. I understand it. I don't hold it against them. And it was it was nice to even see somebody mention it openly. Whoever wrote that blog post on the Unity, uh, Unity blog site, there was one blog post where they were talking about um, at some point in time, they open sourced the C-sharp side of VRChat because there's also a C, C, C++ side, which is like the core uh, engine tech. And then like there's C-sharp bindings for it. So they open sourced the C-sharp side. I don't know if it's still open source or if they like took it down or what, but like at some point, at some point in time, they open sourced the C-sharp side. Um, and then I think somewhere at the bottom of the blog post, they I think they were answering an FAQ maybe, which is like, okay, why isn't the entire, it was something along the lines of what about the rest of the engine or why isn't the entire engine open source and stuff like that. And they mentioned that, look, as much as we would love to, as much as we would love for it to be open source, we would open source it tomorrow if we believed or we would open source it today if we believed that we would be in business tomorrow. So like that gave me an idea that they don't want to release the code because they feel like their core engine code is kind of what's, it's kind of what's giving them the edge. Um, and it's what's keeping them in business. And they feel like if they, if they open source the whole thing, people won't have much reason to use their various services and stuff right um people can just dig into the code and like compile their own and all of that stuff so where was i going with this yeah black box so for the longest time unity a lot of unity tech has been black box and the way that it worked is people who wanted to learn how this stuff works they would post in the unity forum and then a bunch of people would a bunch of people who had knowledge about it they would talk about it they would explain how various components work and if the do if if the discussion required it then an actual unity dev would join the discussion and give a bunch of information about it um that's how it worked for a lot of a lot of their tech. Uh, either somebody who has built, uh, okay, it would start with somebody knowledgeable about the tech, giving you an answer, a bunch of answers, and then either either somebody who is a Unity dev in general or a Unity dev who worked on that specific technology that you are trying to learn about. Um, either one of these, they would come in. And, and start explaining things. And that's the only way that you, you were able to learn how various systems worked. It's not a very good workflow, if I'm being honest. It's very limiting. Uh, people don't always get answers for, for why things are the way they are, why something works the way that it works, why something doesn't work. But it is what it is, right? But when you're dealing with an engine that's closed source, then this this is this is what happens. That was quite a tangent to go on. Holy shit. Uh, let me take a sip of water. Okay. So like I was saying, I should look into how Godot handles animation or rather how that whole animation system works. Introduction to the animation features. I'm not going to, I'm hopefully not going to 
get too distracted by this. I haven't even opened it on like my streaming system. I'm just just real quick. I want to look at the docs. Um. Okay. Create simple animation. Okay. Okay. So a lot of this is, from what I understand, keyframe based. Okay. All right, what about states? What about like various animations transitioning between various animations? Um, okay, create a simple animation, keyframe, okay. Animation track types. Uh, track types available. Okay. using animation tree with animation player Godot has one of the most flexible animation systems that you can find in any game engine okay creating an animation tree all right okay so at some point I should probably look into this maybe actually what I wanted to look into is animating a 3d skeleton because, like, if I'm able to set up my avatar, and which, to be fair, Unity has something like that as well. It's not that Unity doesn't provide you with any option. There's a... I'm, I'm not comparing, is what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to compare that Unity doesn't have this and Godot has that. Unity does have it. Unity has... Unity, in fact, has a um, an animation rigging package which i've been meaning to dive into for a while i plan on using that for animating my uh my avatar whenever i'm able to get not not av not vr chat avatar animating my vtuber avatar speaking of vtuber i didn't open up my vtubing application dude um yeah let me just let me just open that up real quick <laughs> let me just open that up in in the last in the last half an hour of the stream um Where is it that? No. Where where is the thing? Yeah, there it is. Okay. All right. Man, spout spout is it's pretty cool. Like I can use spout for various things and I want to use it for various things. Even in even in my VTubing setup, I can use it for various things. Like imagine, I could send, I could probably send multiple spout textures um, and receive those textures in OBS. Um, if I'm able to set up, I still haven't managed to set up transparency oh i should also probably set up like a an overlay for my uh for my stream but like not not overlay in the sense because like i don't want an overlay that's that's very limiting because like i've seen and like no oh okay there's an ad playing so i'm gonna sit quiet for 30 seconds Man, I was just reminded of, of a sort of nightmare scenario that I dealt with a short while back. 
there was this uh so there's a streamer that I watch named Lord Ethelstan. And he had held um he had held a competition in uh within his community for um there was a theme given and they and and people were allowed to make various forms of media uh based on that theme and and they could enter it for the competition um for the contest and whoever won whoever won first place they would um whoever won first place they would Why am I blanking on this? Whoever won first place, they would win uh, a PC. There was a it was a PC giveaway, and there was a competition for that. And dude, people made some amazing creations. Unfortunately, uh, a bunch of creations had to be dropped. A bunch of the entries had to be dropped because there were way too many entries for them to go through. They were only able to go through like sixty four, I think. I don't remember exactly. Let's say sixty four. But they had like hundred plus entries. I think they said, "Sure, I don't, I don't remember how many, hundred twenty or or something, something along those lines." Hundred plus entries they had, so they had to drop a couple of entries. They had to drop like half of the entries. My entry also got dropped, but, um, like this, this just now I remembered, this was a nightmare scenario, and I haven't had this issue since unity 5 which is why it blew my mind when that happened um i was working on the project i saved the project i closed unity and i don't know what happened when i opened unity back up the project was a mess the scene in which i was working that scene refused to load properly. Nothing in the scene loaded properly. The assets were fine. The assets were intact. But any sort of metadata that the, the scene had, any sort of data, in fact, that the scene had, it was gone. That, that scene got corrupt. And it... Holy shit. That took out, like, I think four or five hours of work that I had done on crunch by the way i'd done like four or five hours of work and that was just gone all of a sudden so like whatever i had worked on i decided to make it like a comedic thing and i was like yeah okay my thing crashed so let's just pretend that so and so thing happened so and so so and so so and so in fact now that i think about it i never actually like i released the build on on github i never released the source code for it I think at some point I should release the source code as well. I'll release the I'll dump the entire project for that matter. It doesn't it doesn't make a difference. Um it was just a fun project for me to work on. And uh now yeah. It this was interesting for me because I got a chance to work on a sequential dialogue system. If that makes sense. Multiple, like a, a sequence of multiple a chain of multiple dialogue sequences that's a better way to put it like it was interesting because uh, like conceptually you can say that yeah okay you can do this you can do that you can do this you can do that right you can have a bunch of dialogues uh you can you can transition between them you can have like different types of dialogues and uh you can have one dialogue sequence and then something else happens, and then you can have another dialogue sequence. You can say that conceptually, right? How do you implement it? That's where it gets a little tricky. That's where it gets a little challenging. If you have never done that kind of thing before, and I had never done that kind of thing before, so I was curious, and I got a chance to, I got a chance to learn because of that. Um, but yeah, yeah, I just, I was just reminded of that. Okay, anyways, uh, on with this write defaults thing. Huh. Okay, uh, write defaults. Write defaults on will write back the default values of all animated properties 
on a controller wide basis uh, on a controller wide basis that are not animated in that particular state this can cause some very strange interactions if you don't plan on it this feature was added by unity during the migration to version 5.0 isn't that when they introduced mechanism When was Mechanim introduced? Hold on. Uh, Unity introducing Mechanim. Oh, Mechanim was... It seems like Mechanim was introduced in Unity 4, not 5. Okay. Cause like I'm also looking at I'm also looking for blog posts. When was Unity Mechanim introduced? Okay, let's open up the docs because it does mention something about before 4.0 and stuff like that. Okay, okay. Legacy animation system. Okay, so prior to that, it was all done using the legacy animation system. Okay, so I guess I guess Mechanim was. I guess Mechanim was introduced in Unity Four. Man, we've come a long way from Unity Four. Holy shit. I started Unity in like Unity Four Point Three, I think. What was it? I think it was four point three. Wasn't it? Because, like, in one of the later versions, they introduced... Uh, uh, they introduced a new UI system. Unity 4.3 2D, 2D game development overview. Oh, maybe 4.3 was when they introduced the 2D tools. The 2D... Uh, Introducing our new feature set for 2D. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so maybe I started with, like, slightly earlier. Or maybe it was 4.3 exactly. I don't remember. Anyways. Um, right. I'm having a hard time focusing on whatever is going on here. Um, but the gist of it apparently is that uh, they recommend they recommend keeping write defaults off and explicitly animating any parameter that needs to be set by uh, the animation. Note that this may require adding reset animations or adding properties to the animation to initialize transforms in a specific orientation. All that being said, if you get into more advanced use cases and setups, it may be advantageous to uh, to use write defaults on. Okay, finally, generic avatars. Uh, AV3 also supports non-humanoid generic avatars. If you want access to similar features that AV3 humanoids have access to, you'll need to follow a few guidelines. Improve, no, import your generic model as an FBX and assign it the generic rig type so that an avatar object is created. So that an avatar object is created. Okay, okay. Make sure the avatar object is referenced in the avatar field of the animator component at the root of your avatar. The same game object as the avatar uh, descriptor. Leave the animator controller blank. It will be slipped. It, it will be slipped, stripped. It'll be stripped at runtime. Um, 
and use the playable layers to define your custom animation controllers. Generic avatars have three playable layers and other layers are specific to humanoids. Okay, so we have base, action, and effects. Okay, good to know. So if I decide not to do a humanoid thing, if I decide to just do... All of this is slowly starting to come back to me because I remember reading a bunch of these things before as well. So like if I do decide to stick with just uh, just non-humanoid, just a generic rig, I can still do some cool stuff with it. I can still do like fun shader stuff and moving random things around here and there. So we have three playable layers to work with. I understand that we have three playable layers to work with. I need to understand exactly what that entails. Um, like what exactly can I do there? Does that mean that I have three layers that are being blended between or is it only three states? I don't think it's just three states. Like, th this is what I need to understand. Like, it, what exactly would a layer... I, I think we'll, we'll get into it, like, once... I think I'll understand it once we get into, like, the more practical stuff. Um, if you do not follow these steps, your generic avatar will not have access to many AV3 features, such as expression parameters and state behaviors. If you're fine with that, you can add an animation controller directly... Wait, state behaviors. So we have access to a certain level of scripting. Let me Google this. State behavior. Wait, no. Is is that is that like state behaviors? Because like state, I remember state behaviors are like a. They give you a certain level of scripting within the animation system, but like. What exactly are you able to do here, like within VR chat? Or is it that we are using one of their pre made scripts to do various things? Could that be it? Because I'm not seeing any code being written over here. I'm I'm only seeing a bunch of pre-made components. All right. Uh, when you've got a specific state selected in the animator view, you'll be able to add state behaviors. They're like they're a bit like components for states. They do different things. Uh, try adding them, and you'll see what they can do. All state behaviors run on the first frame of the transition into the, into that state. State behaviors should run no matter how long the state machine remains in the state containing the state behavior. Uh, the term should is deliberately used here as in the Unity documentation, it does not define any guarantee that state behaviors will execute given very small transition or state durations. Okay. If you want to be completely safe, ensure that ensure the total time spent in the state containing the state behavior and any transitions directly to the to that state is a minimum of 0 0.02 seconds. Although in practice this doesn't seem to be required. Okay, uh the animation layer control allows you to blend the weight of a specific animation layer. Okay, uh, I think this is going into more advanced animation stuff. Uh, where were we? We were here somewhere. State behaviors. Um, if you are fine with that, uh, you can add an animation controller directly into the root animator, leaving the avatar field blank. This method can be useful if you are just building a hierarchy of static objects in Unity and want a simple animate and want a simple animation. All right, you know what? Um, so I'm going to carry on reading this. I'm probably also going to go through this whole thing today since I've now, you know, started this thing. I don't want to just let it go to waste. So I'm probably going to go through this whole thing. 
and then later on uh, look into uh, a bunch of other stuff as well because like, I want to look into animator parameters I want to look into avatar dynamics which has a bunch of other topics as well I also want to look into playable layers and expression menus and stuff like that so yeah we'll do that uh in future streams i guess now now we are doing the avatar thing uh so we're gonna do that in future streams i guess but that's gonna be it for today um i hope you guys have a nice day and i will see you all next time peace